Hello students, welcome back to my English classes. I hope you are all fine and you are all understanding my class. So in the previous class we have discussed the systems of classification, domains of life, etc. So in this class we are going to discuss uh, the kingdoms of classification. And see, the living organisms from the beginning, they have been grouped into separate or different groups or kingdoms in order to classify them. I told you many times we need a system of classification so that it is possible to identify the organism. So likewise, uh, the living organisms uh, from the beginning only, they have been grouped into different groups or kingdoms to classify them. And from the beginning, the uh, organisms will be placed in different kingdoms uh, and those kingdoms are called as kingdoms of classification. So in that, the first one is a two kingdom classification later three kingdom classification, four kingdom classification and five kingdom classification likewise are many kingdoms of classifications are proposed by different scientists. We will see which are the kingdoms of classification. So firstly we are starting with the two kingdom classification. So the first one is called as a two kingdom classification. So these systems of classification are kingdoms of classification is very important and this two kingdom classification is proposed by a scientist named as Coronas Linnaeus. Coronas Linnaeus. I think you are all familiar with the Coronas Linnaeus that you used read in the first chapter of Living World. Yeah, the two kingdom classification is proposed by the famous scientist Coronas Linnaeus in the year 17. Whenever we touch 
an odd object we will immediately take back take back our hand because we are responding to that stimuli so usually the living organisms have this property responding to the stimuli if the organisms will respond to stimuli he included in the kingdom animalia if they are not responded in he included in the kingdom plantae and even he considered cell wall as a character you know that when you whenever you draw a plant cell you will draw you will label it as cell wall and cell membrane but in animal cell we cannot find the presence of cell wall only cell membrane is there so he considered cell wall as a character if the organisms have a cell wall he included in plantae if they do not have cell wall he included in animalia likewise of only morphological characters he considered for his classification i think it is clear so carolus linnaeus he proposed two kingdom classification and he classified all living organisms into two kingdoms kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia based on morphological characters but do you think that it is acceptable it, uh, whether it is clear or it leads to confusion that is very very important this system of classification or this kingdom of classification it is not widely accepted because it leads to various confusions we we'll see uh, how it leads to confusion for example as i said so depending upon locomotion uh, according to carolus linnaeus if the organisms moving they are included in animalia and if they can prepare their own food they are included in plantae but do you know a protozoan called as euglena so this euglena it shows both plant as well as animal character see so for example so this is the structure of euglena so this euglena having flagella flagella is the locomotory organ which help for the movement of this euglena so if they contain euglena you will place in the kingdom animalia but do you know here they contain chloroplast euglena contains chloroplast do you know this chloroplast is the characteristic feature of plants so that they can able to prepare their own food that's why they are called as autotrophic but here euglena also contains chloroplast so that it exhibits autotrophic mode of nutrition then in which kingdom you will place this euglena so as it contains flagella it should be placed in animalia as it contains chloroplast it should be placed in plantae so as it leads to confusion it is not acceptable and one more drawback is that there is no distinguish between prokaryotic and uh, eukaryotic organisms in the previous class only i told you prokaryotes are the organisms which do not contain a true nucleus and membrane bound cell organs so here a uh, carolus linnaeus he included bacteria bacteria in the kingdom plantae so carolus linnaeus he included bacteria in the kingdom plantae because bacteria contains a cell wall as it contains a cell wall he included in a bacteria in he included in plantae but bacteria are prokaryotes because they do not have two nucleus and membrane bound cell organelles such prokaryotes he included along with eukaryotes all plants are eukaryotes they contain two nucleus and membrane bound cell organelles only based on the presence of cell wall he included in plantae but bacteria they are prokaryotes and plants are eukaryotes that is one drawback and one more drawback is that he included both photosynthetic and non photosynthetic organisms in one group so the fungi fungi these are called as achlorophyllous are non photosynthetic because they do not contain chlorophyll pigment and they cannot prepare their own food so we can say that these are heterotrophic organisms if they cannot prepare their own food they are called as heterotrophic organisms so he included fungi in the kingdom plantae as fungi also contains a cell wall 
See, it's just to modify the protein in the classification. Whatever the organisms which are placed in the plant may and may they are, they remain as it is. But this uh, almost acre, what it is, is e separated all unicellular organism from this plant in Animalia. E separated all unicellular organisms and included in the kingdom protista. So e included bacteria, algae, fungi, etc. in the kingdom protista. So try to remember e included the algae, bacteria, certain plants, fungi in one group. But here again it leads to confusion because when he plays algae and bacteria in the same group protista, algae belongs to the plant, they are eukaryotes, but bacteria are prokaryotes. Again, fungi is included along with algae. Algae are autotrophic, whereas fungi is heterotrophic. Again, it leads to uh, confusion. Later, the four kingdom classification was proposed. Here you should remember the drawbacks. Why? And later one more, one more kingdom is proposed because of this time drawbacks. So as E included bacteria, fungi, algae in one group, they are unrelated organisms. Later the four kingdom classification was proposed, and this four kingdom classification was proposed by Copeland, a scientist named as Copeland in the year 1956. The four kingdom classification was proposed by Copeland in the year 1956 and he proposed a new kingdom which is called Monera. Monera. So this is the fourth kingdom. Along with Monera, the three kingdoms are Protista, Plantae and Animalia. So now there are four kingdoms and Monera is a kingdom proposed by Copeland. So, Copeland, he included only the organisms with the prokaryotic cell structure are included in kingdom Monera. So, Monera includes only the prokaryotic organisms like bacteria and cyanobacteria. That cyanobacteria is also called as blue-green algae that we can discuss later. You remember, Monera includes the prokaryotic organisms. And the remaining three kingdoms will be as it is. But here, now Monera includes the prokaryotic organisms, fine. Protista includes certain unicellular organisms. But in this protista, still the fungi is remaining. So, algae, here I told you the examples include the bacteria, algae, fungi. Bacteria will be included in the Monera. And algae is included in plantae. But fungi remains as it is. So that later the five kingdom classification was proposed. So this five kingdom of classification is very very important. So this five kingdom classification is proposed by an American ecologist named as R. H. Whitehacker. R. H. Whitehacker in the year 1969. So R. H. Whitehacker system of classification is very very important. You may get a question about five kingdom classification. So, five kingdom classification proposed by R. H. Vaitaka. Then, which are the five kingdoms? Now, there are five kingdoms, namely kingdom Monera, Protista, and a new kingdom called Mycota, are also called fungi, later Plantae, and Animalia. So, these are the five kingdoms proposed by R.H. Vaitaraka. So, R.H. Vaitaraka, he classified the living organisms into five kingdoms. These five kingdoms are very, very important. Now, the existing kingdoms are these five kingdoms only. But, in order to classify the living organisms into five kingdoms, R.H. 
a single cell or many number of cells. So here cell structure whether they are prokaryotes or eukaryotes and tennis organization, body organization whether the organisms are unicellular or multicellular. If the body of the organism is made up of a single cell they are called unicellular. If they are made up of many number of cells they are called multicellular. That criteria is considered and a mode of nutrition. So there are two types of mode of nutrition: autotrophic and heterotrophic. If they can prepare their own food, they are autotrophic. If they cannot prepare their own food, dependent on other organisms, they are called heterotrophic mode of nutrition. And reproduction. So reproduction, you know the definition for reproduction. And again, in the reproduction, there are types: sexual reproduction, asexual reproduction. Again, in asexual reproduction, there are different types of asexual reproduction, and that criteria also are joint type are considered. And lastly, phylogeny. You know, phylogeny it is nothing but evolutionary relationship. Whether the organism is primitive or advanced, the first found organisms are called primitive, and later found organisms are called advanced. So all these criteria are considered by Archimedes. Kingdom classification. So this is uh, the final classification proposed by R. H. Whitaker. And so this Monera. So in R. H. Whitaker system of classification, Monera includes uh, all microscopic prokaryotes. So this is important. Monera includes uh, only microscopic prokaryotes. You should remember only Kingdom Monera includes prokaryotes. Uh, But 
these are the unrelated organisms in the kingdom protista later so initially they included these organisms in the kingdom protista but later these organisms have been separated and included in the respective kingdoms why the changes will take place because over the period of time the criteria for classification will also be changed and so these type of changes uh, they may even occur in the future so because uh, in our understanding uh, based on our understanding as well as evolutionary relationship the changes will be continued and the changes will may occur in the future also so this is about the kingdoms of classification and these five kingdoms are very very important and the criteria are also very very important and in the next class onwards uh, we are starting with the major kingdoms uh, we will be studying with the kingdom monera and now we will discuss few other questions related to the today's class and today's class which also includes the previous class see the first question who was the first to attempt a more scientific basis of classification who was the first to attempt a more scientific basis of classification option a linnaeus option b aristotle option c metacor option d bentham and hooke the first attempt of classification was done by aristotle so later we absorb the drawbacks in his classification but the most of the first attempt of more scientific classification was done by aristotle option b is correct aristotle and second question aristotle classified plants into herbs shrubs and trees on the basis of option a anatomical characters option b morphological characters option c physiological characters and option d biochemical characters you know that aristotle classified plants into herbs shrubs and trees based on only morphological characters option b and three third question uh, in how many groups did aristotle divide the animals on the basis of presence or absence of rbs so he classified animals into two main groups of the days anaema and anaema that is based on the presence or absence of rbc so here they have given option a 1 option b 2 option c 3 option d 4 you know that there are two types of classification based on rbc and fourth one two kingdom classification does not distinguish between so this two kingdom classification does not distinguish between option a eukaryotes and prokaryotes option b unicellular and multicellular organisms option c photosynthetic and non photosynthetic organisms option d all of these so i told you the drawbacks in this two kingdom classification there is no distinguishing between prokaryotes and eukaryotes unicellular and multicellular and photosynthetic and non photosynthetic their option is d all of them and fifth question in which year white acker proposed the five kingdom classification so white acker class uh, proposed the five kingdom classification in the year 1969 their options they have given 1960 1959 1969 and 1979 their options in 1969 is the correct answer so this completes our today's class in the next class we are starting with the kingdom